Trump family values, Ivanka making a fortune in China right after meeting with the Chinese president on behalf of dad. It's probably just a coincidence, but it's yet another red flag raising questions about conflicts of interest. Then remember when the White House said an aircraft carrier was steaming towards North Korea as a show of force? Well, today we learned it was actually heading in the wrong direction. Now the Pentagon and the White House pointing fingers at each other. Also, the lawyer for Alex Jones of InfoWars says all his conspiracy theories and right-wing propaganda, they're all just an act. President Trump, he's appeared on the show and supported some of these outrageous ideas. What does it say about him? Evening, everybody, and welcome to RFL. I'm Richard French. Thank you so much for joining us this Tuesday night. And we begin this evening, where else but at the White House? You know, I'm sure there are many of you who believe I like nothing more than playing gotcha with our president. Despite the unending material he and his administration provide on a daily basis, I'd actually like to spend more time on issues impacting us right here in our region. That, however, is rendered moot almost every morning because it seems by the latest revelation, tweet, or expose, it confirms our worst suspicions that we cannot trust Donald J. Trump. Now, every single day since he's taken up residency in Pennsylvania Avenue, he has put his self-interest before the country's. Every day, he's exaggerated, he told a half-truth or an outright lie. Every day, he's either flip-flopped or broken a campaign promise, and every single day, when caught red-handed, he shows not a shred of contrition. Now, this act may have won him his party's nomination and eventually the presidency, but it's not working now. A little later in the program, we're going to break down the latest poll numbers, which are universally, historically bad for a president who hasn't even been on the job for 100 days. But before we look at the math, let's look at just the last 24 hours. Do you remember Trump the candidate calling China the biggest threat to the American nation? We can't continue to allow China to rape our country, and that's what they're doing. It's the greatest theft in the history of the world. Rape America bad, right? So it was stunning, even by Trump standards, when our fearless president publicly did a 180 and absolved China of currency manipulation, and he now considers them fantastic. His words, not mine. So what's up? Maybe some sage Asian geopolitical bargaining, or maybe it was a Jedi mind trick, or maybe it was just Trump being Trump, which translation means Trump looking out for Trump interests. We now learn that what we all assumed, it pays to be the president's daughter. Turns out, I'm sure in just a bizarre coincidence, that the same day Ivanka and her husband Jared Kushner met with the Chinese president, the Chinese government granted her company new trademarks, only the latest in a series of international trademarks the Trump family has received since dad took office. Moreover, it seems these trademarks have been fast-tracked by our government. I'm sure just another coincidence. Why does this matter, you ask? Well, beyond the fact that it may be a violation of the Moments Clause and against the law, it's the very thing he gave us his word he wouldn't do. It's also tacky as hell, and most significantly, it seems our president might change our trade policy not because he believes it's right or wrong, but because it might help his daughter sell more handbags. Next, it being tax season, let's talk about the promised massive reform. Now, not to be a stickler for math, but if you remember when his campaign proposal was scored by the nonpartisan CBO, they found it would do three things. First, it would give rich guys the biggest tax break in American history. Second, middle class folks would actually do worse than they do today. And third, the biggest loser would be the bottom line. Deficits, they would skyrocket, as the president would say, it would be huge, big time, but not in a good way. But again, let's not let facts get in the way of a good story. So. Saturday, Americans, they rallied in dozens of cities, asking the president to make good on yet another promise, namely to release those tax returns. You remember, Trump trotted out the canard that he couldn't release them until, you know, he was done being audited by the IRS. It's a bunch of bull. But anyway, no one 
thinks this audit is still ongoing. And shockingly, the answer we now get is not not now, not ever, will we ever see these returns. Like you, I was shocked. A man as trustworthy and honorable as Donald J. Trump would go back on his word. But here we are. Except it's hardly just bitter Democrats whining about losing in November. Across this country, state legislatures are considering legislation requiring candidates to release their returns to be eligible to be on the ballot. Every president for the past 40 years, they've all released returns, and I can't think of a candidate, let alone a commander-in-chief, I'd be more curious about enacting policy that would be either self-enriching or conducting policy for personal reasons. Mm. Did anyone say Russia? Finally, we learned today that the naval armada steaming towards the Korean Peninsula last week, as we were told, to shake fear into the North Koreans' boots, was actually heading in the wrong direction to the Indian Ocean, some 3,000 miles away. And that was as recently as this weekend. Now, before you say, hey, this was some strategic subterfuge, know that the White House and the Pentagon, they're blaming each other, and it'll be at least five days before it gets to where we were told it was heading. Point is, if photos didn't surface proving otherwise, we would still be in the dark about what was hype and what was real. Either this really is the gang that can't shoot straight, or it's going to be up to all of us to keep digging because we've been given no reason to believe a word they say, and that starts from the man at the top. All right, let me bring in our panel right now. Dominic Carter, political journalist and author, and Andrew Whitman, our senior political correspondent. And I know they think it's not the case, but every day, right, you wake up to something else that you feel you're being hustled about. And to me... The polls, and we're going to get into a segment where we show all the math, it bears out across this country, people don't believe it when he says something now. And Andrew, we're not even 90 days into this thing. And you compound that with all of the steps that the Trump White House has been taking to pull the wool over our eyes intentionally. Not just misleading us or lying or, you know, saying that a... a, a carrier is headed towards Korea when it's headed in a different direction. Look at the White House visitors' logs that, that we found that helped us find out how Devin Nunez got his information that he made the whole big stink about, oh, I've got this information that helps the president out. It's, they, don't, they specifically don't want us knowing what is going on and who they're talking to and what they're discussing. And the reasons for that could be myriad. I mean, it could be all a strategic defense. It could be national defense. But compound it with the lies that we've seen and the intentional misleading in public and the things like the inauguration crowd not being, don't let your eyes deceive you. I'm telling you that the crowd is bigger than, than your eyes say that it was. And this really becomes, it has the impression of being an intentional effort to hide what they're doing. And, and I think that this is all part and parcel of it. And you know, to Andrew's point, I just, I just want people, consider the hypothetical. Pretend Michelle Obama wrote a book, okay? And candidate Obama, just months earlier, had been railing against fill-in-the-blank country that once he got into office, he was going to take him to the woodshed. He was going to change our policies dramatically. There's a meeting at the White House. The next day, magically, said government buys 10 million books that she wrote. Or Chelsea Clinton's now, you know, an adult daughter in the White House just like Ivanka. And the exact same thing happened. Her company magically, that her mother railed against, now taking a 180, gets completely different treatment. Do you know the investigations, the calls for independent prosecutors and committees and everything else that we're going on right now? I just think we have been so conditioned in the last year that whatever happens out of this, we're treating it as like it's reality TV, not America. And I'm not trying to overhype this thing, but exactly the scenarios I gave you. Do you know how people's heads will be exploding right now on Fox if this happens? Well, Richard, under those very uh, same scenarios you just, uh, just described, Republicans, and we know this is factual because we can point back to the immediate history of what's been going on the last couple of years, Republicans would call for impeachment, <laughs> uh, they would call for independent prosecutors, and even worse in this case, they would practically shut down government. Nothing would go forward until their issues were addressed. 
But because they are now in the majority, they can look the other way. While I think even they, Republicans, are holding their nose about this president. Richard, I just want to say this because your editorial was on point. This, the election of this president, and I think you know that if I thought he was doing a good job, I'd be the first one to praise him. This is a, an experiment by the American people that has gone terribly, terribly bad. Every worse suspicion that you could have of the president of the United States acting in clown-like manners and manners to specifically manipulate and, and uh, trick the American people is exactly what we're looking at. It's we're looking at, we're yeah. looking at a, a presidency where he's lining the pockets of his family it, members. It, you know, Andrew, two things. One, we mentioned last night, tonight, there's a special election in Georgia in a, in a very red state, in a red district, Newt Gingrich's all seat. Depending on how it turns out, there may be uh, an awakening of some saying, we don't want to continue to ride this uh, horse here because it might be politically dangerous to rub publics. But there's a second part. I always remember when Trump landed um, that chopper with a big gold-plated Trump name in Iowa. Um, and I looked around at this table when it was a live pictures, too, and I said, put a fork in him. There's no way these people are going to go for him. Well, he won. Um, and I misread where the public was. But those people in Iowa that day, I believe, looked at him and said he's an authentic guy. He's not PC, doesn't play the Washington game, but he's finally going to look out for guys like me, America first. When you see him backing off on all these promises, like trade deals with China and everything else, and it's got more than a veneer that he's doing it to look out for the Trump brand and the Trump name and the Trump daughter, and all these other things are going on that say to you, wait a second, I thought he told me he was taking care of me. At what point does that say it's not just stick it to the media, stick it to Washington, but it's getting stuck to them? I think there's one of two possibilities. One is when legislation passes or the president signs an executive order that does directly impact individuals. I mean, we're already seeing reports from people who voted for Trump who have an undocumented uh, member of the family or an undocumented neighbor or relative and saying, well, I never thought that Trump was going to come after my family. And it turns out they are. And so now those are the people who are starting to ask those questions. And we start, saw it a little bit with health care. We'll see it a bit with other issues, too, when it starts directly impacting other people. Uh, and, they, and they get the sense, this is not the bill of goods that I was sold. The other possibility is internationally. I mean, you talked about the carrier right. and North Korea. There's a couple of concerns to this. Not only has Trump threatened North Korea with a blank threat, but the pieces to, to pull off that threat weren't even in place. So the next time Trump threatens North Korea, or threatens any other country, what makes you think they'll take that threat seriously? He hasn't followed through on the threat, and he didn't even have the pieces in place. The other lesson that you're learning, what if you're China or some other country, what's the best way to get your agenda across? Do a little business with the Trump family. I mean, once people start to get a sense that the world is paying attention to this, that we are losing control of the things that Trump claims that we are gaining greater control of, and that this White House can be, in effect, bought off through the business side of it, People, that message may get through to people, too, especially as developments around the world force that realization on the people. And on the subject of developments around the world, when we come back from the break, President Trump's foreign policy is raising a whole lot of eyebrows. And it's even raising more questions as well. We're going to sort it out with a reporter from The Washington Post right after this. <laughs>